The world has completely flooded and every person on the planet has disappeared except for me. After a seagull woke me up early from my cryopod trying to eat a worm, guess it is now up to me to figure out what happened to the world. Why am I the only one awake and can I survive on my own with no one else? Hopefully I can do all of this in 100 days and thank you to Tiny Bull for sponsoring this adventure in I Am Future, which just released to early access on Steam with a discount. As I stretched my legs having been asleep for 6 years, 6 months and 5 days, which was very close to an awkward number, I found a cybernetic hand on the tree nearby. Someone tried to use it as a back scratcher, but it'll be more useful as my hand. There was a suitcase where I could change my clothes so I put on some headphones. Oh, I can listen to some sick tunes. I picked up some fossilized roofs and this rooftop was an absolute mess. If I was going to be living here, I would have to clean up. I munched on the biomass I got from the roots, which wasn't very filling, but after such a long sleep, I needed anything I could get. Then saw a vending machine nearby and it can talk? Okay, so you can buy things. Okay, let's start off by just cleaning up my area. I then found a box which I was able to disassemble which gave me a battery that I can use to fix that fridge over there. The fridge talks too and his name is Earl. I'll have to ask Earl some questions later, but it told me of a deck chair that I can use as a bed since my cryopod wouldn't work anymore. I just first had to repair this ladder to get up there, so grabbed the planks nearby to use it as parts, but needed two more and nearby was another tool. Hey, we got the iron saw. Now I can chop things up. Now I can chop things up. Cut up the chair into planks and now I can use this to make the ladder. Climbed up and decided to just have a short nap which drained some food and recovered some health. Good to know. I will still need to establish a reliable food supply. I found a weird worm stuck to Earl that I plucked off and Earl told me it's an electrocyte. Earl also pointed out some infected weeds nearby which I would need to pull out and as I did, I found some stop weed spray underneath it. Could have used this earlier, but one bottle wouldn't be enough, so I set up a workbench and crafted a second bottle, and using it to kill off the remaining weeds in the area, there was a leech on this gate, and removing it unpowered the gate to unlock some more of the rooftop for me to explore, thus completing what must have been considered just the tutorial, as it was now 6am on day 0. I found a lift I was able to go down, scoop up salt water, oh a fishing rod, let's use a fishing, let's catch a fish, can I catch a fish? Fish without bait. That's fine. There we go. Hey, I caught a clam. Yeah. Nice. And with my clam in hand, I went back up to the rooftop to continue scavenging around. It was officially day one at midday and my stomach was ravenous. So I munched on some blueberries and bright flowers. But I have to set up a sustainable food supply and fast, else risk starving. I built myself a campfire in the hopes of cooking any fish if I actually catch them and not just clams and I was able to desalinate some water in the fire. Then I found a kettle which I managed to disassemble for some components and disassembly complete nice. Oh is that fertilizer? I mean I'm not gonna lie, I can't want the fertilizer. Let's just leave that bucket over there. No, that's lettuce. What do I need with lettuce? Is this fertilizer? Hey, fertilizer! With the fertilizer, I completed my crop plot so hopefully I can perfect my gardening skills and grow some food. And in my quest to explore the roof, I found a gate I repaired with some transformers. And at the end of the rooftop was an android whose battery quickly died, but it had a tool for me. The injector. Allows you to gather liquid resources but requires an empty bottle. The injector is attached to an android's arm and is filled with ionolite. This substance was discovered by scientists during an expedition to the second moon. Lonolite became humanity's driving force and primary resource, but also led to its demise. Guess this ionolite is a reason for the apocalypse, but I'll have to explore more to figure out why. I then just scrapped the android for parts since it was broken anyways. Thanks, bud. <laughs> I just killed my robot friend. Well, he was already dead, but you know. Ooh, um, a good bunch of those berries. And there was also a smart tower nearby, a broken one at least. Hopefully I can repair this to help discover more info. But with it getting dark, I decided to just head back to my patio chair and slept through the night. Mm. 
Waking up at 7.30 a.m., there were some weeds I had to clear up with my poison spray. With my inventory getting full, I built up a small storage box, but I could simply could not find any more sheet metal to finish it off, as I destroyed everything I could for resources. Look at all the stuff down there. How do I get there? At the workbench, I discovered I could upgrade my rusty saw to iron with some solvent, then found the final piece of sheet metal I needed to finish off the storage box where I could deposit my junk. I discovered you can upgrade structures, so I had a look at what I needed to upgrade the workbench. Memory module, two transformers, and four nails. I guess I have a goal for resources to collect. I made the transformers I needed, but was short of scrap for nails, so I went out to break down what I could find for scrap. We got the tempered drill. I was able to rehydrate the plant so I could break into it to get past, but on the other side was a new tool, the low power drill. But with it starting to get dark, so I climbed onto my stool and headed to bed. Nighty night. And in the morning, there was a shelf I could cut up for the final bits of scrap metal. Then nearby was a broken bridge that I would need to repair if I wanted to get onto the next roof. What does this need? Planks. Oh, I got plenty of those. Boy, you just wait. I got all the plagues you could possibly need. There we go. Chuck that in there. Grab that. Oh, sorry. Grab this. And one more. Ow, oh, there we go. Look at that. I'm not done. Okay. So I need seven planks and ten nails. Got it. Guess I am going to need a lot more to finish this bridge. With the scrap, I made up some nails and upgraded my workbench. Great! Not sure what this unlocks, but I've unlocked it, I guess. We got a fancier workbench. I was able to make myself a backpack module to allow me more storage, then planted some blueberries in my crop block. Hopefully these don't die so I can have a sustainable food supply. For now though, I made myself some spoon lures to try and catch some actual fish. But with it getting dark, more of those centipedes showed up that I was able to kill off with my weed spray. Yeah, get wrecked. My guy is too hungry to be able to sleep. That's a problem. Well, I got my fishing around. Let's go fishing. Might as well. Can't do anything else because I can't sleep. Using the lure, I was able to catch a couple small bug art. But with no more lures, I just spent some more time fishing and caught a clam when I realized you could use the clam for bait. Oh, I could use clam for bait means I can catch a different type of fish. That is a terrifying fish to catch. A scaled hard tooth. God damn. Having spent some time fishing, I got back to find you can use a campfire to cut up the fish into a variety of ingredients, which allowed me to cook some patties. I can make patties? Let's make some patties. Fishing is the bomb. I just made five star Gordon Ramsay meals. Damn, you shit! And now I can go nap. 5 a.m. getting to bed. So, like a true YouTuber, I decided to sleep until 11 a.m. Because who actually sleeps that late? <sighs> Starting out on day four, I watered my blueberries, which were growing nicely, before crafting up some lures and spending some time hanging out on the dock fishing cooked them all up into fillets and patties, then spent the rest of the day building up the next section of the bridge, placing in planks and nails, but next I was going to need to find some steel frames for the next section. So I headed to bed for the night, and I had some infected weeds to clear up in the morning. Then found a microwave I was able to disassemble for a bunch of components, and I still wanted to fix that smart tower in hopes it would give me a clue to what actually happened to Earth, but I needed matrixes. For now though, I needed some organization in my post-apocalyptic deserted rooftop. So I set up some plank racks before lying down on my garden chair for the night. And I had some weed to clear out in the morning, a common chore at this point. But it's the apocalypse, we all have to do some weeding. Some watering for the blueberries and some gathering of junk around the place. I only needed one more matrix for the smart tower I was repairing, but I yet again was running low on food. So I spent more time fishing and cleaning up the junk that was left from killing all the weeds. Then did some gardening by planting lettuce to be used to make a salad before laying down to sleep for the night. And it's been a week since I woke up as the last person on earth and I still have no clue as to what actually happened. The lower section of the roof was blocked by an old cryo bed but I would need a better drill to be able to disassemble it to get past. I also still needed to buy a hammer from the talking vending machine. 
So I spent more time to catch the fish it wanted for the fertilizer, use that to make some more crop plots to grow more lettuce, then settled down for the night, watering all my lettuce as I woke up, and made some nutritious salad with lettuce, bright flour, and biomass, which I sold to the vending machine for a hammer. Using my new hammer, I began to smash apart some boxes, and I found you can actually get electrolytic solution using my extraction arm, which I did not realize earlier when I used it, as now I could make the final matrix I needed to finish repairing the Unicorp Smart Tower. Hopefully this helps bring some answers for the many questions I already have. It seemed to be able to control the nearby drone, but I was unable to do so at night so headed to my garden chair to sleep. And I set up another storage box in the morning and planted all my bright flower seeds then ran over to the smart tower. And I was able to send the drone on its own little mission exploring a crashed aeroplane. And hidden at the front of the plane was a talking jukebox. Not sure who decided to make every appliance sentient as that was probably not the best idea, but I decided to leave it next to the fridge so they can talk to each other. The jukebox taught me how to make a crypto farm. I mean, the world's really post-apocalyptic. So I set one up and a biogenerator in order to power it. Harvested all my bright flowers that had been growing, then set off my drone on what appeared to be a store where I could spend my crypto. They had a drill bit set available for 140. So if I get that, I'll be able to upgrade my drill and break down that cryo bed to get to the next section of room. But with it getting dark, that would have to wait. Besides, I needed to farm more crypto. I did a ton of fishing before the sun rose, since I needed more food, then checked on my crypto farm and I had 140 U coins. So this was enough for that drill bit set. So I sent off the drone back to that trader TV. Yes, the shop is run by Sentient TV. Bought the drill set before using it to upgrade it to the tempered drill. With this new upgrade, I disassembled the cryo bed, cut up the frame, unlocking me access. There was a blueprint here for a resource printer, so I'll need to make one of those, as well as just an absolute abundance of more junk for me to disassemble, cut up, and collect. I even found some steel frames that I could use to work on the rest of the bridge. With it getting dark and my inventory being full, I just headed off for bed. I had more weeds to deal with in the morning, as well as got all of my U coins. Maybe there's something else I can buy from that TV. I built a resource printer only to find the bio generator didn't have enough connection points. So I went down on the terrace, collected all the parts and components I needed for the upgrade, connected the printer and this could print steel frames. I would need to upgrade it to be able to print foam panels though. So after a busy day, I lay down for the night and in the morning I had a chat with the jukebox. Maybe the solidarity is driving me crazy, but it told me how I looked like someone. It asked me to get a haircut and it said my name was Lucius, the head of Unicorp. But that's not who I am anymore. So I cut my hair again and I finished off the section of bridge but was going to need a lot of planks and nails for the next piece. I collected plank after plank for the bridge piece, slotting them in one by one to finish the section, only to then see for the next piece I was going to need foam panels. Guess I have to upgrade that printer. In order to get foam panels I need to upgrade this which means I need two more metal structures, a memory module, and three matrices. Let's grab that. So I had a look at what I needed, and the only thing I was short of is a memory module. But in order to make one of those, I was going to need to upgrade my workbench. Except in order to upgrade the workbench, I needed foam panels. Bit of a catch-22 here. So after checking what tool upgrades I could get and saw the reinforced hammer just needed some more steel frames, and voila, let's go see what we can smash. I wanted to upgrade my other tools, so I sent out my drone to see what resources it could collect, and Stan the TV merchant had a programmable core that I bought. I can use this to make my own robot. While my drone was busy with that, I broke down a cryo bed that was blocking another path down to the terrace, so I'd have a faster route then built up my very own robot. His name was Hephaestus, and he immediately began to collect wood and store it for me. I was going to need a charging pad for him though, so I began to set one up, but with it getting dark, I just slept away the night. I sent out my drone once I woke up to get me some more supplies while I finished off the charging pad. I guess even robots need a hot tub to recharge sometimes. <laughs> That's how it charges? Really? I did just need to set up a biogenerator for the tub, so at least my robot can chill out. But safe to say, it's not the smartest robot, as I tried to drive through the generator I just set up. 
So I move the jetty slightly over only for it to then get stuck behind a bush. Guess AI is not the future yet, even if I am the only person alive. So I set up another bot in hopes this one would be better. Spoiler, it wasn't. So I'll just have to continue to do things myself and made myself a strong cyber hand to help me carry more resources. I had a look at what I still had on my to-do list and one important item was to upgrade Smart Tower. Looking what I needed, it was going to be more steel frames, some oil cans and microchips. And two weeks had passed since I woke up and I knew some things like that my name is Lucius and I'm the head of Unicorp. Not that that helps me now, but still no idea what happened to flood the planet. But the jukebox was starting to make a lot of noise, so I just moved it to the corner in hopes I would hear it less. But the rest of the day was just spent enjoying the newfound silence and then headed to bed. I used my smart tower to decode a storage crate I'd found and that gave me three cups of coffee. Hell yeah, so good. I crafted up the last oil can I needed for the smart tower upgrade, but running out of food, I decided to use all the centipedes corpses to catch a couple black batters to cut up for food. With the full belly, I headed off to the smart tower and upgraded it, and now my drone can travel further around the city. So I sent it off to collect a bunch of goodies as well as buy a memory module and steel disc. Using the disc, I was able to upgrade my saw, so now I can cut up more stuff. So I tried to free my robot minions and one left, but the other one just stuck around trying to go through the bush. There was a second vending machine on the terrace with a variety of items for me to buy, so I'll try to get everything at some point, and with my new saw, I was able to cut through some fencing on the terrace, and hidden on the other side was the coming soon sign. Not sure who left it here, but we should figure it out in the future if you like and subscribe. I wanted to upgrade my resource printer only to be short of matrix, so after my drone brought me a microwave that I scrapped for components to upgrade the printer, I could now make foam panels in order to finish up that bridge. So I had those start to print, and meanwhile I went to break down all the structures nearby for resources, as I needed them to upgrade my workbench. I just would need to set up power for the workbench, so I learned the blueprints to set up some electrical poles, two of which I built to extend the range of my generator to power the bench, and then sent off my drone, and this time it came back with a new friend, Prospero the Prophet. Now this sentient animatronic asked me to throw a housewarming party. I mean, I don't have anything better to do, so might as well do what I need for this Prospero. So I'll have to find three board games. Not quite sure who I was going to play with, but maybe the fridge knows how to play. I also need to find a stage and just hope I wasn't the one singing. And the rest of the day I spent clearing up all the junk for resources. And with my new tools before settling down to pass some time and recover my energy. Watered all my plants as the vending machine wanted some of these lunar things for more resources and then did more de-weeding. And my printer had finally printed enough foam panels in order to finish the next section of bridge, but for the next piece I was going to need more planks and nails. Thus I cut up the old bench into planks in order to finish off the bridge, unlocking a huge new area to explore. I found one game that Prospero wanted as well as some strong fishing line for my rod. And at the edge of the new area was a grand old stage. This would be the perfect spot for the party. But I am going to need a lot more supplies. There was a record on the stage so we can use this to get the jukebox to play new music. And I also found the last game Prospero wanted and just left on the couch. Then went and chatted to the jukebox to invite it to the party. I really am just losing my mind in this apocalypse. But the fridge said it would come to the party if I made hamburgers. I mean, I already know how to make patties, so I tied the new fishing line on my rod so I should be able to catch some bigger fishies. And my drone brought me a pump from the TV's crypto store, and as I was waiting for the drone to get back, I noticed one of my robot minions was missing. How did my robot get down there? It's literally in the coming soon area, I, I, I can't get to it. <laughs> Yes, I am now short one robot, and the other is just chilling in the hot tub. You really can't make good help these days. I upgraded my injector with a chemically resistant tube that I had bought from the vending machine, which I used to start setting up a pump on the roof so I don't have to keep going down to the dock for water. I also set up a sprinkler so I wouldn't have to manually water my plants anymore. 
and I had a chat with Prospero on day 20 to let him know I had all the games he wanted. So he was ready for the party. I just still had some tasks on my to-do list before I would be ready to host it, including the massive upgrades available at the Smart Tower. I had a chat with the jukebox and she actually told me why the planet flooded and it was due to Pandora, the planet's second moon. But that still doesn't explain why I am the only one alive. It was a bit of a weed problem so I used a more powerful pesticide to clear out the plants. I set up a molecular synthesizer on day 21 and this thing can use some sciencey mumbo jumbo to convert resources into other resources. But this just made me realize how messy my base actually is. So I began to move around all my structures into this neat little corner, setting up even more crop plots and even giving Earl his very own spot. I set up a storage rack to store my sheets of metal, then changed my clothes. I figured after three weeks my clothes were getting a tad smelly. But with my base looking a lot better, I went off to do some fishing. But it started to get dark so I headed home to plant some lunar tubers which need to grow at night then lay my head down to sleep. I did some more filleting of the fish I had caught as I wanted to start upgrading my cooking to make it even better. I also upgraded my campfire to be a field kitchen and had a chat to Prospero who confirmed that the planets flooded due to Pandora, the planet's second moon. I made myself some fish steak at the field kitchen for a bit of variety and I spent the majority of the day simply collecting wood, breaking apart appliances and simply just cleaning up the area and collecting resources. I also found an almond plant so at least now I had some nuts to eat. I upgraded my grill again to make even better foods, did some gardening and just lay my head down for the night. I bought a disco dancer shirt from the vending machine so I'd be well dressed for the party. And I was chatting to the jukebox on day 26 and asked what actually happened to all the people. It told me how the mutant worms were the reason for the extinction of humanity, but also mentioned there may be others who escaped on a submarine. Maybe in the future I could find them, but for now I made myself a backpack module to have some more space. And I also learned if you combine some almonds and water you get almond milk. Not sure who decided almonds needed to be milked, but here we are watered my lunar tubers which were growing nicely and it was the end of the third week since I woke up and with the weeds all poking up again I began to clear them out with my pesticides then began to clear out the terrace to see what loot I might find including some extra fertilizer to finish up some of my crop plots and I was growing the lunar tuber so I could make some bread to make myself a burger and went to tell the fridge what I made the fridge ate my burger I worked so hard on that <laughs> Like, bruh, I'm sad. I wanted that fur. I worked too hard on the fur. I'll just sit here and eat my lettuce. Since my burger was eaten by a fridge, I planted some coffee beans to be able to make my own coffee. And I really need to start getting ready for the party, so I began by clearing out some of the junk around the stage. Then cleared out even more weeds that had popped out of all the cracks. And this really is a pandemic. Did some gardening to have enough food for the party. And I set up a new pump that was closer to my garden so I'd have less walking for water. With the fresh water, I made myself a nice hot cup of coffee. <sighs> and Earl actually told me how to make a canapé with bread, caviar and seafood. An interesting combo. So after spending some time fishing for what I needed, I filleted all the fish and with the fresh fillets and caviar, I made myself some canapés. These should be a great snack for the party. And I got dressed into my finest party clothes looking like an absolute chad. It felt good to look this good. I brought in all my friends with the drone and they were all so excited. This party was going to be amazing. So I climbed up on stage to start the show. Check one, two, check one, two. Hey, what's up? We're on the stage. Yeah, it's me, Lucius, on the stage. Thanks for coming here today, everyone. You, you know what, Earl? You're right. I, I did force you to come to my party, but it feels amazing to know that I'm not alone as I stand on the stage amidst the world in ruins. I have you, my friends. Oh. Okay, Mark Queen, that's enough sass. It was a long and difficult process to build this oasis in the concrete jungle. But all that effort would have been in vain if not for you, 
those who can call this place home. Oh, uh, Prospero, you're too kind. But once upon a time, you trusted me, Lucius, to lead this city. Thank you for letting me do it again. And look, who are you? Uh, that's kind of rude. What? It wasn't my fault. No. I, I it wasn't, but I don't remember anything. Um. Guys? It, it wasn't me, I promise. My queen? It, it, it wasn't me, my queen. Prospero? It, it's not true. He's a liar. Bridge? I don't even know how to make blueprint look shit. <laughs> Will my friends ever forgive me? Who is the TV actually? I can't figure this out now. I'll just have to survive on my own for now without my friends. And thank you for watching. Check out this video next if you enjoyed this one. Ba -da 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 -da